Puck drop on the upcoming NHL season is getting antagonizingly close, which means it's time to get serious about the breakdowns, predictions, and analyses. On today's episode, you will get exactly that with the Pacific Division, breaking it all down and ranking teams eight through one. Let's get into it because it's time to get this paper, baby. You're locked on fantasy hockey, your daily podcast on fantasy hockey. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hockey heads, fantasy fanatics, and degenerate gamblers alike, welcome back to your show. It is the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast with Steel and Flip. We are continuing on today's episode, our breakdown and analysis of each division in the NHL. Yesterday, it was the Central, a bit of a more straight, call, a straightforward conversation. On today's episode, so things are getting spicy with a look into the Pacific Division, breaking it down for y'all, eight through one in terms of the rankings, but also, of course, taking a look at some big time fantasy assets, some teams to target, some teams to avoid, and everything in between. Thank you for making us your first listen every single day. Steel and I see you out there. That subscribe button has been getting hammered, and we really, really appreciate that. We are just getting warmed up, baby. And it is going to be an exciting push up until puck drop, as I alluded to. But it's also an exciting conversation on today's episode, Steel. And let's get right into it because the Pacific Division holds a lot more intrigue and a lot more conversation points. Then the Central, in both of our opinions, I think that's clear, and I'm very interested to see who you have slotted in here, especially in these five, four, and three spots, because I think that's where it gets really interesting. <laughs> so let's get right into it, my friend. I'm intrigued to hear what you have to say, as always. Why don't you kick us off with that eighth spot in what is going to be an interesting Pacific Division race? Yeah, this is going to be a very interesting conversation. I think things are going to be a little bit different uh, for today's mm -hmm. episode than they were in the Central. And yeah, I'll kick us off. And I think it's, I'm just going to try to keep this pretty sport with the eighth ranked uh, team for the Pacific Division. And that, it, for me, is the San Jose Sharks. Yeah. Uh, I don't think they've gotten any better this upcoming season. Uh, obviously, making a couple of trades over the last couple, uh, you know, off, the off season as well as before the trade deadline, uh, trade deadline last year as well. Yep. I still, I do still believe that they have some good players, obviously, on their team. We're going to continue to see a lot of growth from guys like Timo Meyer and to, uh, Tomas Hurdle, mm -hmm. who I really love and really enjoy watching them play the game. Me too. Uh, Eric Carlson's going to step up uh, big uh, in a big way. He's getting first power play time now, first penalty kill time now because of the de uh, departure of Brent Burns. So his minutes are going to go up, and that's a guy that you and I have discussed maybe having a bounce back season because he's getting that time. Uh, on the first unit for both power play and penalty kill, as well as just exactly. being the first uh, right shot defensive pairing as well. Um, I think it's also good to highlight the the goalies for the San Jose Sharks as well as uh, Capo Kakinen and James Reimer. You know, these are guys that I wouldn't be taking in the draft, but no. these are guys that I would be keeping my eyes on on a weekly basis if my goalies mm -hmm. aren't producing, if my goalies get injured, because okay. both these guys are probably going to be, you know, 50-50, maybe Kakinen gets more of the starts, but because he is the younger goaltender. True. But again, this is a rough team right now. So this yeah. is a team that I would stay away from for my goalies. And for that, you know, why I'm saying it, watch them on a weekly basis because you got to check their schedule as well. If they're yeah. if they have four or five games in a week and they're playing, you know, some of the bottom, bottom tier teams, that's a good opportunity to jump on those guys and pick them up mm. if, if they're available. I think that's really the only way to look at this team is in very strategic, you know, situational formats. Logan Couture, Thomas Hurdle, Timo Meyer, you know, you could even find some later round value in a guy like Kevin LeBanc if he has a decent season. Barabanov is going to get a lot of looks on that top line. Yeah. Deeper, deeper rounds and deeper formats. You can find some value with the Sharks. But man, is that blue line awful. <laughs> and man, is that bottom six awful. This team yes. is in full rebuild mode. The second Brent Burns left that team in the offseason, it was already a rebuild, but that really signif signified to me a full-on rebuild. He was a longtime San Jose Shark and really the face of that franchise after Patrick Marlowe and Joe Thornton departed a number of years ago. Um, listen, Steele, let's move on to the next spot in our, our yes. rankings because we both have the San Jose Sharks at the bottom. The main takeaway here is fantasy value is going to be found deep. Hey, Logan Couture put up a good year last year. 
He is getting up there in age, but he can still score. Timo Meyer and Thomas Hurdle are two world class players. Let's get let's not get that twisted for one second. And both of those guys, I would be happy to have on my team in some of the even in the top five or six rounds for sure, no problem. But after that, let's move on. They will be in the basement of the Pacific Division, making no noise. That I think is clear in the seven spot steal. And I think this is where things start to get interesting because I looked at this for a while this afternoon. And, you know, this evening, I should say. And realistically, this could go anywhere from now. So I'm going to put this out there. Seattle Kraken at seventh. That's just my opinion because they just don't have enough talent, in my opinion, to go up against even the likes of the Anaheim Ducks, who I think had a great offseason making some good under-the-radar moves. So I'm going to put the Seattle Kraken yeah. in there and say this. There are some really intriguing fantasy pieces on this team that I might be taking a risk on in the appropriate round. Matthew Beignets, Alexander Wenberg, Andre Burakovsky, Oliver Borkstrand. These are some options here, Steele, that I think the Seattle Kraken are going to be a lot better this season, but I still see them in yeah. seventh. I don't know what you think about all that. Uh, you know, I, I actually have the Anaheim Ducks in the seventh spot for me okay. in the Pacific Division. I do want to say real quick that I, I don't know if I mentioned this, but I do have the San Jose Sharks finishing with 65 points on the season. Okay. But in seventh in the Pacific, I have the Anaheim Ducks. And you are, it is pretty close for me with the Seattle Kraken, but mm -hmm. I have the Anaheim Ducks finishing the regular season with 80 points. I look at this team and I just think they show a lot of promise for the near future, but just not right now because they're a very, very young team. Trevor Zegers, Troy Terry, Mason McTavish, Jamie Drysdale, Max Comtois, I Isaac Lundstrom, and Euro uh, back, uh, back and in, all 24 years of age or younger. And they all have talent, but they're just so young right now. And then pretty mm. much the rest of the team is 30 years or older. So it's a bunch of young guys who have a lot of promise in the league. And mm -hmm. then a bunch of veteran guys who are filling up the rest of the spots for me. And that's the way I kind of looked at it. I, finish, I I think the Anaheim Ducks finished with 80 points. I think they're, they're good. They show a lot of promise in the near future, and they could be one of those top teams in the Pacific in the next couple of years. Okay. But as of right now, not there quite yet. I appreciate this take because let me hit you with these two points, and this is why I'm thinking, and we can actually just put a nice little bow on this whole 8th, 7th, and 6th spot because I have the Ducks in the 6th spot for yeah. this reason. Aside from that lengthy losing streak last year where I believe they reeled off 11 or 12 in a row, that was an ugly losing streak. This team is right on the playoff bubble. They missed out by 20 or more points because they literally lost for almost a month in a row. I know that doesn't mean they're still, you know, it's like, hey, flip, those are still losses. One losing streak really derailed that season. So that's number one, because other than that, they were a much improved team. Number two, Frank Vitrano comes in. Ryan Strom comes in and John Klinberg comes in. Those are three good players that now come into a lineup that you mentioned the pieces. Trevor Zegris is worth the price of admission. And I think this team is moving in the right direction. I'm here for the yes. conversation, though, that they are definitely in the bottom of this division. And that's really because of how good the top of it is. But I think the Ducks are a team to keep an eye on. You mentioned some of those pieces. Jamie Drysdale is a guy that you want to have your eye on most definitely. He is going to be anchoring this blue line in Anaheim for a number of years to come. And now he has a veteran uh, offensive piece to back him up a little bit in John Klingberg and eat some of those minutes. I think the, the strength of this team comes from its blue line. You mentioned some of those pieces, Cam Fowler, Kevin Shattenkirk, some good veterans that are obviously getting up there in age, but are the kind of players that you need to support these rookies. The issue with me with this team, Steele, and we're going to go to break right after this, and I think we can both agree with it. John Gibson and Anthony Stolarz, that's not good enough. That's not going to be good enough when you're playing five or six or seven games a year <laughs> against the likes of the Flames and the Oilers and even the Canucks, who I expect to have a bounce back year offensively and have a ton of offensive weapons. That's not going to be good enough in the blue paint. That's clear. But we're going to talk about everything else in this exciting Pacific division coming up around the break, including the top three teams and including the team that both Steele and I like the most from a fantasy side of things. But first we got to pay these bills, baby. And let me hit you with a brand new message. If you've been hanging out with some friends and putting back a few drinks, a few can become too many. The evening comes to an end and people start to head out and thinking of calling for a ride. No, you live nearby. You can make it home. It's no big deal. What are the odds you're going to get pulled over anyway? It could happen. Your insurance goes up. You lose your license. You lose your job or your car. Or worse, you could kill someone. 
Everyone knows the risks of driving drunk. The results are tragic and often deadly. However, that doesn't mean you can stop to get behind the wheel under the influence at any time. That's why police officers are out there right now looking for impaired drivers on the road to save lives. If you think you're okay to drive after a few drinks, think again, play it safe, and plan ahead and get a ride. It only takes one mistake to change your life or someone else's forever. Drive sober or get pulled over. That's what we have to say about that. Be safe out there. Thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. Don't forget we are free and available on all podcast platforms, which also includes YouTube. And like Flip said, we are so close to 200 subscribers, 191 subscriber, yes, subscribers sir. currently as of yesterday. And thank you so much for tuning in for today's episode with Flip and I. Let's get back into the Pacific Division rankings. I'll kick us off. You know, you, you. we obviously know who my sixth place team is, and that is the Seattle Kraken. I do think they are better mm. than the Anaheim Ducks this upcoming season. Obviously, okay. it's their second year in the league. Uh, they, you know, everyone can agree that they obviously went a different route than the Vegas Golden Knights did when they first came into the league as well. Um, but I see a tremendous upgrade for the Seattle Kraken this upcoming season. There is a lot to love about this team. They have an entire brand new first line uh, for them this upcoming season. Andre Burakovsky, Matthew Beniers, and Oliver Bjorkstrand, who I think all three of those guys have great fantasy value for the Seattle Kraken. We saw great, I saw great chemistry from Jaden Swartz and uh, Alex Wenberg and Jordan Everly, who round out the top six forwards as well. Um, you know, mm. Schwartz was, he only played 39 games last year. He is up there in age, but if he can stay healthy, he is a great fantasy, uh, great fantasy pick, in my opinion, in the later drafts. I would like to see, though, Jared McCann make his way up to the second or first line left wing position because he was their top forward last year with 51 points, I believe on the season. Mm -hmm. um, looking you know, I really do like their, uh, I, I really do like their defensive core. I don't think they're going to be, you know, you know, putting up a ton of points offensively. Uh, Vince Dunn put up 30, he did put up 39 points last year, but I do like their defensive core. Hopefully Martin Jones can back up Philip Grubauer and be a proper backup than what we saw last year with the Philadelphia Flyers. And hopefully Philip Grubauer can find his game once again, especially with this defensive core in front of him. So I really do like the Seattle Kraken team and I have them finishing with 84 points on the season. Yeah, it's an interesting take because, you know, just the track record of one season does not look good for the Seattle Kraken. Yes. But there is there is a lot to like in terms of some of these pieces. That's on paper. That didn't translate onto the ice last season. I don't know if it translates onto the ice this season. That's why I was more comfortable going with the Ducks. But what I will say is, you mentioned Vince Dunn. You mentioned Beignets. They also bring in Shane Wright. He's probably going to get a good chance to at least get a look to make this team out of camp. Who knows if he actually ends up staying up with the club. But Vince Dunn is the name that keeps ringing around in my head, Steele, as a guy that I think you can get at a really good round for a really good offensive output this season. Vince Dunn is going to play a lot of minutes. That's number one. And I do expect the goaltenders to be better. That's just because of how bad yeah. Grubauer was last year. And I think you could see the lack of confidence in this team a number of times last season. New group together, lack of chemistry, and no goaltending. That's going to lead to a lack of success overall. And that's what we saw. Anyway, I would like to move on if that's okay with you, Steele. Yeah, of course. Because there is some interesting teams left to talk about here. And the next one up on my spot, it's the number five slot. It's going to be the Vegas Golden Knights, in my opinion. This is yep. what I struggled with, I think, the very most. Because right after this, I like how I have my four teams, four through one. The bottom of this, I this is what I was saying. These spots could have interchanged for me. But the Golden Knights, I think just that Robin Leonard blow was one that I don't know if they can bounce back it's from. It's significant. And I, it is just huge. And I know that he has had injuries before. But he is a good goalie when he's healthy. And any team losing their number one, regardless of what the situation was, right before the season, and I know it was in the summer, but still, that's going to be hard to come back from. And heading into the season with the trio of goalies of Logan Thompson, Laurent Boisseau, and Michael Hutchinson, yeah. oh my goodness, this is going to be a long <laughs> season for the Vegas Golden uh... Knights. I understand they still have some superstars up front and a good blue line. Anything could happen, but when I look at the Canucks, Kings, Flames, and Oilers, 
there's just no spot here for the Vegas Golden Knights. The one thing I'll throw out, though, and you mentioned this, and I think we can uh, talk about the Knights for a sec. If Jack Eichel can turn back time a little bit and do what he did on a triple point kind of campaign for the Buffalo Sabres a few years ago, this team might be right there on the bubble. But I'm saying they miss out and they finish in fifth in this Pacific division. Yeah, th th those two teams for me, the Vancouver Canucks and Vegas Golden Knights, are a coin flip for me uh, for the fifth and fourth position uh, for the okay. Pacific rankings. I, I have both these teams finishing around 90 points at the end of the season. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'll st I, I want to start off with the Vancouver Canucks because I think that's okay. a little bit more interesting. Uh, I really do think Thatcher Demko is going to have to stand on his head again mm -hmm. for the mm -hmm. third consecutive year. Besides Quinn Hughes, that defensive core is absolutely atrocious. Pullman, yeah. Dermott, Shen, Myers. Um, it, it just does not look good for them. And I really do feel bad for them. has to stand on his head, saving 50, 60 saves almost, it seems like, every single night out there. So I do feel bad for him. I think there is a lot to love for the top six forward group for Vancouver, but not much to love for the bottom six. And that mm -hmm. goes the same for the Vegas Golden Knights, like you said. Top six looks really good, in my opinion, but the bottom six, not much to love. And then it's a complete switch around for the defensive core and the goalies in Vegas. The, de mm. de the defensive core is absolutely outstanding. I love the group they have Me on too. the blue line in Vegas. And then just an absolute, like I mentioned last week, the fact that you're going with two guys who's been a, a one guy who's been a perennial backup his entire career and one guy who's played 20 just under or just over 20 games in the NHL, mm. that's not a good look for the Vegas Golden Knight. That's why it's a coin flip in my uh, in my opinion. Both those teams finishing at 90 points on the season. Here's my thing. Number one, you bring up Thatcher Demko with the Vancouver Canucks. And first of all, before I get into Demko and the Canucks, let's just be clear here. You also have the Knights at five and Canucks at four. Are we on the same here or are those swapped around? It's a coin. It's a coin flip. I have Vegas five. Yeah, we'll go Vegas five, Vancouver four, but it is okay. a coin a coin flip in my opinion. Okay, thank you. Just wanted to clear that up. Number two, Thatcher Demko, if any goalie in this division, I think can do it, you know, aside from maybe the, the veteran John Quick, uh, yeah, or sorry, Markstrom. Thatcher Demko is the goalie in this division for me. Yes. Um, and last season, he's gotten better and better in each year, despite the Vancouver Canucks, you know, allowing a lot of shots per game. But I'll say this, aside from me being confident in Thatcher Demko, Quinn Hughes and what you said about these defensive pairings is spot on 100%. But Oliver Ekman Larson and Tyler Myers, if, big if here, if those two guys can have a better season next year, which both you and I have called on the Oliver Ekman Larson signing and contract, they need him to be better. Maybe yeah. he does. And then maybe they spread around that love a little bit more in those defensive pairings because I'll say this, Steele, I absolutely love Elias Patterson, JT Miller, Brock Besser, Bo Horvat. I even like some of the peripheral pieces that they have going on. Andre Kuzmenko was an interesting signing from the KHL. Don't know what that's going to be. Vasily Podzolkin is an interest. Pods, Pod Colson, my bad. Interesting, <laughs> interesting young player here. I think that the Vancouver Canucks with... Bruce Boudreau behind the bench. By the way, a much better team with Brucey back there. Yes. 32, 15, and 10 last year since Bruce Boudreau came on. Had this team playing much better together. I think the Vancouver Canucks are going to be right there as a wild card team. And I would look to Elias Pettersson. And I know he had struggles last season. He still finished with 32 goals. 32 goals still yeah. ain't nothing to shake yeah. a stick at. This guy, for me, I expect a nasty season from him. Brock Besser and others in Vancouver. That is where you and I disagree. I don't think, I think Elias Pettersson is very overrated in my opinion. I, okay. Uh, I, I don't think he's a star. I don't think he's going to be a star in this league. I think he's <laughs> just a great player. That's what okay. I can rate him at. A great player in my opinion. Um, you are right. Vancouver Canucks fans are about to drop some heat <laughs> in the comments, but that's Look, what this show is about. Drop those comments and let us know what you think of these takes. Let's steal and I know, baby. He's a skilled player. He's got a ton of skill. He's got a great shot. But other than that, I just don't find his game very, very appeal appealing in my opinion. I think there's a lot of room for improvement. He can be a star maybe in the near future. But as of right now, I think he's perfectly fine being, uh, you know, as a, in the great tier. He's a great player. Okay. And that's what I'm going to give him for right now. Okay.
I am going to leave this conversation for a sidebar <laughs> preview to the season conversation because there will be some times to talk about more specifics in terms of quality of player. We have the three, two, and one spots in the Pacific to get to, Steel. So why don't we? Uh, why don't you take us there, baby? I'm going to take us there real quick. But first, I got to let you all know about Bet Online. That is where Flip and I are placing all of our bets for this upcoming season. Bet Online is the fastest way, fastest and easiest way to check in on all your betting needs, find all your favorite sports and events, and the, and the number one online sources for odds, lines, and games. Find reviews and news of every league, including Major League Baseball, NFL, NBA, NHL, combat sports, esports, and even golf. Bet Online continues to be the top online resource for all your sport wagering information from live in game betting, scores, and podcasts. They have you absolutely covered. Head to Bet Online today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and actions happening today. Bet Online, where the game starts. Thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. Don't forget, we are free and available on all podcast platforms, which also includes YouTube. So please hammer the subscribe, hammer the follow button, flip, and I appreciate all the love and support out there. And let's continue with the top three ranked teams please. in the Pacific Division. Please, I would like to kick us off here because please. I think, you know what, I, I think you and I are going to agree on this one. I think we know who the top two teams are in the Pacific. Yeah. And that the, the third ranked team has obviously got to be the LA Kings. I have them finishing the regular season with 97 points on the season. So somewhat very similar to what they had last year. I do really like the all-around look of the LA Kings heading in this upcoming season. The one area of concern for me uh, is in the crease. That's my main concern right now heading in the, okay. into the upcoming season. Yeah, and the way I was looking at it is you and I have talked about the, you know, the injuries from Quick, you know, him getting up there in age, 36 years old, turning 37. Can Cal, uh, can Cal Peterson be that guy to step up if his team needs him, when his team needs him the most? Will Jonathan Quick's body be able to keep up with what his mind wants to do? That is my main concern for uh, this upcoming season. I think getting Drew Doughty back into the lineup is going to be absolutely incredible. 31 yep. points in 39 games last year. Adding Kevin Fiala on that top line with uh, Anze Kopitar is going to be absolutely incredible to watch too. I like this team. They finished third with 97 points in the Pacific. Okay. I'm going to disagree slightly with you here only because – John Quick played 46 games last year and looked great. Everything else you said is true, though. He is getting up there in age. He is going to be 37 this year with a lot of mileage on that body. The LA Kings made a number of deep cup runs in throughout his career. There includes a lot of extra playoff games and playoff mileage on that body. So that is clear. But I honestly think one of their strengths is the goaltending because John Quick and Cal Peterson proved last year their numbers were solid and they were one of the best duos in the league. And I think, honestly, aside from the quality in net steel, you said it, lots to like about this LA Kings team. And they have one of the deepest draft talent pools going. Also, Quinton Byfield on the cusp, Sean Dursey on the cusp. There are some very, very interesting pieces with this Los Angeles Kings team. Philip Deneau, Victor Arvidsson, and Trevor Moore were one of the best second lines in the game last year. You highlighted that a few times. Those are three guys as well that I'll be looking at for some good fantasy value in some deeper rounds. That's for sure because they showed that they could put up some chemistry. Adrian Kempe is also a player to watch from a fantasy side of things. Yes, sir. But I don't know. I, like, I, I'm disagreeing with you because I – maybe it's because I believe in John Quick a little bit more than I should. <laughs> I think they're going to be just fine in net. I say they finished in second. I have the Flames finishing in third just behind Wow. Them. That, that's it, Steele. That's it. And I yeah. will leave it at this. The LA Kings are going to be right there in the mix. The top three teams in this division, Kings, Flames, and Oilers, I think are clear. But to me, the Oilers are the toast of this division. And yes. we'll talk about that in a second. But let me just wrap up my conversation on the Flames and the Kings, and I'll throw it back over to you for your Flames yep. explanation. I just want to give the, uh, the Calgary Flames a little bit of credit here because I know the offseason has been a mess out west for Calgary. <laughs> Salvage with the Huberto Uyghur trade. But I want to say this, Daryl Sutter is a very astute defensive coach. 
He had the Calgary Flames from missing the playoffs into the second round in just one season. And I know they got bounced in the second round in pretty serious fashion. But Noah Hannafin, Rasmus Anderson, Mackenzie Wieger, Chris Tanev, Oliver Killington, and Zadorov form a very, very yes. nasty six group of defensemen. And I think the loss of Goudreau and Kachuk, I know it's going to take them a little bit of a step back, but I don't think much. That's why I just have them in third instead of second. I think they're definitely the top one of the top teams in the West still, and I don't think they're getting enough credit because this defensive unit yeah. is going to give teams fits. And I think everyone's forgetting about a Vesna-nominated goalie in the cage. Don't yes. expect the Calgary Flames to be pushovers just because they lost two of their major, two of their biggest stars. Huberto comes in and salvages it. Beautiful defense and a great goalie. Don't sleep on the Flames, but I think they're just off the pace, just off the pace behind the LA Kings. I do have them as the second team in the Pacific Division. Yeah. You highlight that great defensive core they have. Uh, you know, I've highlighted the, def the, the, the tandem they have in the crease with Markstrom and Vladar. Um, I, so I'm going to keep this short and sweet with just talking about the forward group. It is very hard to judge this team as a for, as, as an offensive uh, team. The fourth line doesn't really produce much anything besides the physical aspect of the game. You look at Sean Monahan, he's still going to be, I think he's still going to be a ghost out there on the ice. Big question mark on Sean the Monahan. Second, for sure. The second line is very, very streaky, which hurts Andrew Manji upon his game, especially since he's playing with Backlund and Coleman who, you know, don't put up more than 40 points on a season. Mm. It really is that first line that's going to be carrying a lot of the load for the Calgary Flames. Jonathan Huberto, uh, uh, Tyler Toffoli, and Elias Lindholm up, you know, as the first line unit. That's why it's a little bit hard to judge. But Jonathan Huberto, like I said, he's a very underrated superstar in this league. He's one of my favorite players to watch. I think he can help this team a lot offensively. That's mm. why I have them second and finishing uh, with 105 points in the Pacific Division. Look. The Flames have been the busiest team in the offseason. It's been a wild, wild <laughs> west for Calgary fans uh, this summer. Uh, I just think, you know, I'm not here for all of the Flames slander because this team is well coached. Big yeah. balance blue line and people, I swear, are forgetting about how good uh, Jacob Markstrom was last season. This team, I believe, losing two stars of that caliber regardless of who you bring in offensively, I think they're going to take a little bit of a step back. And that's why I have them just behind the Kings, but don't sleep on them. There's tons of fantasy value up and down that lineup. That's clear, but realistically steel. And that's where we're at with this conversation. The number one spot, it's the Edmonton Oilers. And yep. last season we started this podcast right in the middle of it. And our second episode was when the Edmonton Oilers brought in Evander Kane. And we didn't know what that was going to mean for their overall success. <laughs> but what it ended up meaning was a balanced attack up front and another piece for Leon Dreisettle and Connor McDavid to have their load spread around. And I really do think Evander Kane is one of those options for me that I am going to be going after him in the top three rounds for sure. I could see 40 plus goals from him this year playing with McDavid. I could even see more if he stays healthy and he doesn't do anything silly in terms of getting suspended because we know he has the tendency to kind of go yes. off the rails a little bit, but I'll leave it at this and I'll throw it back over to you. Leon Dreisaitl and Connor McDavid right there are good enough to take a team on a playoff run. Now you have Jack Campbell. You have another year of Evan Bouchard developing. You have another year of Darnell Nurse getting better. Philip Broberg is one of those other names that I wanted to bring up. He's going to get a crack at this lineup right out of camp. An intriguing name. We know where the issue lies with this team, Steele. It is the blue line. If they can find yeah. a piece to augment this bottom six, so sorry, the bottom pairings in this defensive unit, I really do expect – one of my bold predictions was the Edmonton Oilers in yes, the cup yes, final. Yes, it was. I'm sticking <laughs> to it, Steele, and that's why I had them in this first spot. I think with Jack Campbell and another couple of years under the wings of some of these young players, the Edmonton Oilers are going to be a very dangerous team to play against. And I'm very, very intrigued to see. And you know I'm sprinkling a little future bet on these Edmonton Oilers. That's a fact. Yeah, and, and I'll keep this short again because you pretty much covered everything. Thank you. Uh, you know, for me, I have the Edmonton Oilers in first, obviously, in the Pacific, finishing with 107 points. Uh, so I do think it is going to be close with the Calgary Flames, but Edmonton just sneaking out. Uh, to finish on top. 
Mm. You know, obviously, I'm super happy and super ecstatic that Mike Smith and Miko Koskinen are bye bye. See you later. They're not yeah, bad. And that's hey. exactly what they needed. The, the, the Edmonton Oilers needed to do. They needed to make that change. And now yes. you have Jack Campbell and Stuart Skinner uh, becoming the huge improvement, in my opinion. Huge, huge improvements. Improvement. That makes them the first place team in the Pacific Division. And as you just said, and as you just uh, highlighted, the, the one area they need to work on right now is obviously on the blue line. And that's what they need to address uh, sometime soon. And, you know, if, if they have to do it by the trade deadline, then you have to get it done by then. But they do have to make the adjustment by uh, sooner rather than later. Hey, they re-signed Brent Kulak. Brett Kulak. He was great last playoffs. But you can't rely on a Brett Kulak for as many minutes <laughs> and as many key moments as the Edmonton Oilers did. That's when you get exposed. Yeah. And they got exposed. But I'm telling you, Steele, uh, you know, as a Toronto Maple Leaf fan, clearly it kind of pains me even more when I have to give credit to the Canadian teams. That's just how passionate I am about my Toronto Maple Leafs, our Toronto Maple Leafs. But this Edmonton Oilers team, in my opinion, is the toast of the Canadian teams next season. Connor McDavid is going to go absolute beast mode next year. Zach Hyman with a second year getting comfortable. Evander Kane, a second year getting comfortable. There's no top six better, in my opinion. Maybe you could make the argument that some are just as good, but this is definitely the top three, top five, top six in the league, most yes. definitely. Yeah. So, hey, all we can do is preview, prognosticate, <laughs> and predict. That's what we're going to continue to do later in the week with the rest of the divisions, and make sure you keep it locked right here because this draft preview, baby, it's coming up, and it's coming up fast, Deal, I can see the excitement in your face. <laughs> I'm super excited, man. We're so close from the we're so close from mock drafts. We're so close from the fantasy season starting, the regular season starting. I'm excited for the National Hockey League to just get back going and I can mm -hmm. start watching hockey every single night. Thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. For your second listen, though, go check out Locked On NHL. Locked On Experts give you a daily 30-minute podcast on all things NHL all year long. Stay up to date on everything in the hockey world. Locked on NHL, your daily 30-minute NHL podcast, which is free and available on all podcast networks, just like this podcast right here. So make sure you hit the subscribe, hit the follow button. We're going to say this every single episode. Thank you so much <laughs> for tuning in for today's episode with Flip and I. Have a great day. Good luck with all your bets out there. And we shall see you back here again tomorrow. Peace.